South Africa, and now the youth drives our taste in music, fashion, social media trends, and yes, food. TikTok, it's time for us to open up our Tuesday afternoon express cook-along menu, inspired by 2020's most downloaded app. Learners from Belleville High School are in the building to help make mushroom cream soup, create the viral baked feta pasta dish, and a raspberry bread and butter pudding. We're also going to be having some fun and games and making our very own versions of popular TikTok trends. I'm Balisa Dembe, and today, nothing can stop us. We're all the way up. Welcome to the loft, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, it's so exciting to have you guys in the loft because we are kicking off Youth Month. Now, Youth Month is something very near and dear, I think, to every South African's heart. So before we get into the show, please may you just introduce yourselves and tell me a little bit about you. Uh, I'm Carlos. I'm a proud learner of Bell High School and I'm a part of the drama um, department. Uh -huh. I love being an actor and acting. Hi, I'm Angelique Arlert. I am a matric student at Belleville High School, and I would say one of my favorite hobbies is to read. Ah. Hi, I'm Eloise Meyer, and I want to be a pastry chef one day. Okay, girls, so we're going to be using you a little later. <laughs> my name is Lila Engelbrach, and I'm passionate about sports. I love being outdoors and just being around people every day. Well, I think that we are in such good company here on Afternoon Express's Loft because it is all about you this month. We're celebrating you, your incredible minds and your different interests. I mean, we've got someone from the drama department. We've got someone who wants to be a pastry chef, someone who loves the outdoors and a bookworm. I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. But before we get into today's cook along and the menu, um, can you just tell us a little bit about Belleville High School? Yes, of course. Um, Bavel High School is one of the schools we are rich with our traditions and we've been celebrating, celebrating those traditions for the past 84 years and next year we'll be 85. We are also one of the few Afrikaans medium schools in the northern states and we are celebrating eight consecutive years of 100% matriculate graduates and we plan on doing it this year again. I mean, that is major. Congratulations to all of the learners and the uh, uh, students and the teachers, the principal at Belleville, because it's things that um, having such proud, confident learners mm -hmm. says so much about the education system. But Carlos, I have to touch base with you. As the gent amongst the ladies, <laughs> um, it is June. What does Youth Month mean to you? So Youth Month is a very important month, obviously, and it means a very lot to me because we are celebrating the youth of South Africa. And it also pays tribute to the children who sacrifice their lives in the upbringing so we to in 1976 mm. um, and it says that we have a voice and it must be heard and you are using your voice so passionately and I think that it takes the youth like you to truly be the difference and the change that we'd love to see on the other end. But no, South Africa, they're not only serious. <laughs> they like to get down and have some fun too. And we are going to be having fun throughout the show. Eloise, as someone who wants to grow up and become a pastry chef, how has TikTok and those different challenges helped you in your craft? I think um, TikTok is a great app. Um, especially for giving a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of videos out there that shows you the day in the life of a pastry chef mm -hmm. or stuff like that so you can learn more about it. I love that. And on that note, <laughs> you know I'm all about having fun. I mean, anyone who comes into the Afternoon Express loft knows that this is a place where we throw down. <laughs> now, not only do we like to bring you great recipe ideas, and hopefully we like to throw in a little bit of fun too. And two people who also love to have fun in the kitchen are Brooke and her granddad. Let's have a look at this TikTok. I just told my dad to start dancing when the beat drops. Hey y'all, I'm here with my best friend. Best friend, show me your moves. Go. You get it, I guess. You went so next best friend. Hi, boo. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I'm already getting into it. So, guys and girls, that seems so simple. Do you think you can pull this off? Yes, of course. Of course. Yes. It's, it's pretty easy. And you've just spent so much time with them, so it feels as if you guys are my best friends. So let me call on my other best friend, Dumi. Come join us. Cue the music. I <laughs> I got to start dancing when the beat drops. Hey y'all, I'm here with my best friend. Best friend, show me your moves. Now listen, we have so much more of this fun coming up after the break as Doobie shows us how to make a delicious mushroom soup. Yeah. 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 
the show. Now join us in celebrating World Milk Day with Clover Fresh Milk. The day is set to recognize the importance of milk on a global scale. And we all know that there's nothing better than a glass of nutritious, superior quality milk. So to celebrate, we whip up a scrumptious Clover Fresh Milk mushroom cream soup and we found some inspiration from TikTok. Let's take a look. Soup season and nothing is more comforting than a nice bowl of soup. Let's make mushroom bisque. I used a mix of hen of the wood mushrooms and shiitake. You can use whatever mushroom mix you'd like. And then I sauteed some onions and garlic in a pot until they turned golden and then I added in the mushrooms. I wanted the mushrooms to get really caramelized and charred and golden so I let it sit for quite some time. I added a little bit more garlic as well. Then I seasoned it with salt, pepper, paprika, cayenne, parsley, and thyme. I used chicken broth for this. You can use vegetable stock if you want or even water. Then I added Worcestershire sauce. Did I pronounce that correctly? I let this sit with the lid on top so the umami flavors can develop for about 15 minutes or so. Then I added heavy cream. You can add coconut cream if you want a vegan version. Taste this for seasoning to see if it needs anything else. And then I top this off with some parsley and some of these red chili flakes. Now look, that recipe seems super simple, but I had to call on some extra hands to help. So as we do, welcome back the Belleville High School students. Welcome back, Eloise, and welcome back, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, what I love about Tumi is that she is the long cheerleader. Welcome back, Tumi. Thank you, Palissa. It's good to be back and good to be, uh, you know, surrounded by such, such excellence from Belleville High School. I love that. And what I also love is the simplicity of this recipe. I mean, a mushroom soup is what it's all about this winter. Yes, Palissa, and the one thing I love about it as well is, like you said, it's simple, but it packs so much flavor. So I think we should just get right into it. Eloise, I'm gonna need you to start with the croutons for us, because they go right on top of this, so that needs to go into the oven. Palissa, you're just chopping up some garlic for us and then grating up some Parmesan. You're the star of the show, because you're chopping up the mushrooms for us. So can I ask you just to slice it up nicely? And then once it's nicely sliced, I'm gonna put it into our pot here, and then basically put everything together and make this amazing recipe. 
recipe. And Balisa, we are using our superior mm. Nova Fresh Milk. Balisa, it's got triple protect. I mean, I, I think we've said this a couple of times. Triple protect, stays fresh for up to 18 days. There's so much greatness about this milk, which makes it so superior for this recipe. And I mean, with Clover Fresh Milk, you get superior quality with every liter to help you give your family and your friends nothing but the best. And what I also like about this recipe is that we're using this very same clover milk in this delicious, simple mushroom soup. Now, Eloise, I know you want to be a pastry chef, so you are working with bread right now, but yes. what is it about being a pastry chef that just makes you fall in love? I think it's um, about being creative and you mm. can... Um, you can like do your own thing, but still make it delicious and very beautiful. Yeah, beautiful like the chef that you are, the <laughs> mini chef, I suppose. <laughs> and for yourself, Carlos, if you were to think of your favorite chef or foodie of all time, yes. who would that be? Uh, probably Jamie Oliver. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he's always in control and like mm. he does everything with passion. Yeah. That is true. Mm. So I think that already we've picked up something about our students. Someone who likes someone who's in control, someone who's passionate that tells us a little bit about Carlos, and someone who loves creativity, someone who loves stepping out of the box and being flexible. That is what Eloise is all about, and I love that. Those are two, three qualities that I think every pupil needs to have. Dumi, on my side, I've already chopped up the garlic. Yes, Balisa. So once you've chopped up that garlic, you're going to hand it over to Eloise because she's going to put it into the croutons that we've got over there and then toss it together with the parmesan as well as some uh, salt and pepper with that olive oil. What I'm doing here, I'm actually going to turn up the heat on our mushrooms because as you saw in our TikTok video, they wanted to caramelize those mushrooms because that brings out that umami flavor. So that's what I'm doing here as well. So I'm going to fry them up nicely. Just make sure they're nicely sauteing. Let me take it all the way up. Like you said, Balisa, at the <laughs> beginning of the show, we are taking it all the way up to start off mushrooms do have their own little saltiness when you cook them it's not it's i wouldn't say it's saltiness but it's an umami flavor so to increase that decadence i'm just adding a bit of salt in there a bit of pepper and then gonna toss these together and then as they fry up, they release some of their own juices. But obviously to make this soup what we want it to be, we need to make a roux of sorts. And that's like a white sauce. So I'm going in with our flour. And then I'm going to put all of this together. Because if you were making a white sauce that didn't have mushrooms, then you would probably just put in the flour without the mushrooms in there. Okay. So after that, to make the sauce, you need some type of liquid. We're starting with our chicken stock over there. All of this is going to get bound together. And then we add our clover fresh milk and some cream into this all of that basically helps it become a nice thick sauce okay you know? and that's what it's all about within soup don't you find Eloise the yes. consistency of the soup do you like a runny soup or a thick soup personally I like a runny soup yes. um yes it just <laughs> intensifies the flavor mm. that's very interesting I don't like a runny soup at all I want to feel it I want to taste it I want that heartiness at the end of the day Carlos which way are you swaying do you like <laughs> A, a, a runny soup, something that's a little thinner, or do you like a thick, hearty soup? Uh, both sides, actually. I like thick sometimes and mm. thin other times. <laughs> I suppose it depends. If you're having yeah. something like a butternut soup, it can be thick and it do me. But if you're okay. also enjoying something like maybe a chicken noodle soup, that can be a little runnier. True, Palissa, very, very true. So what happens is with this soup we're making now, has to sit for a while and cook down, right? But luckily we've got some that we've made a little earlier and it basically is cooked down to the perfect consistency. As you can see, I'm pouring it into there and it just goes in all the right corners for this amazing tasty soup. Carlos has just chopped up some parsley for us that goes nicely on top and those croutons as they go into the oven I've also got some that we made a little earlier because you know we work our magic on the afternoon express kitchen absolutely these yeah. also go on top and Balisa that is our simple easy mushroom soup done in less than 20 minutes <laughs> okay Dumi and here's some parmesan cheese Thank you can just add that what I love about um, what you did here Eloise is that you did add some cheese just on the croutons as well just to double up on that creaminess on that Decadence, I'm here for it. I've never seen it being done before, <laughs> but uh, who wouldn't say no to this? I mean, look at that. Lovely. Now, if you want to get the full recipe and details as to how to whip this up, just head over to afternoonexpress.co.za.
Made with Love by Clover. Moo freshness all the way. That is a beautiful mushroom, creamy soup. Now, Domi, we're only starting. That's just mm -hmm. the starters. Yes, Palessa, we're keeping a TikTok all day today. That, the next recipe is also a TikTok fave, and that is the baked feta pasta salad. Ooh. Yummy. Learners, are you ready? Yes. yes. Well, we came hungry, <laughs> so let's, let's see you when we return. Now we are here with Layla. Welcome back, Layla. <laughs> and welcome back, Angelique. Thank you. Now we are invited some of our Belleville High School students to celebrate Youth Month with us. And I promised you that they would not disappoint. Now we're on to our second recipe of the show, which started off as a simple TikTok trend and ended up being a social media craze. Check this out. Because of this recipe, the grocery stores in Finland ran out of feta cheese. Here's how to make it. Add tomatoes, olive oil, salt, and pepper to a baking dish. Then add a block of feta cheese right in the middle. Bake at 400 for 35 minutes. When it comes out, add some fresh garlic, fresh basil, and give it all a good mix. Then add some of that cooked pasta right on top and give everything a good mix once again. And then it's time for the taste test. So good. Yummy. I mean, so good. I would like to repeat that, Dumi, because we actually did speak about this a few weeks ago on the show when we did discuss simple, easy, quick TikTok trends that just blew up during lockdown. Ex exactly, Balissa. And the one thing I love about this, yes, she did it in the oven, but you also can't do it stovetop, which is what we want to show people, you know? As much as it's a TikTok trend and it goes into the oven, we want to start our own trend, stovetop. Now, learners, has anyone tried this before? Uh, yes. No, but at school we did. We did it together, so... Okay. Did it work? Yes, yes, yes it was it delicious. It is absolutely amazing. Delicious. Hi. 
I have to say, it's amazing. Okay, so Dumi, it's gotten two thumbs up in, yes, the, in, yes. the, in the loft. So hopefully we can mirror the same flavors. We definitely so can. To do so, what do we need? All right, uh, Angelique is going to start up by uh, chopping up some shallots, shallots yeah. for us, as well as some garlic. All of that is going to be the base for us adding our cherry tomatoes and the feta in there. And then we finish it all off with our pasta that's already been, uh, the pasta that we're going to be cooking. Okay. And then just that final touch of flavor on top, which is the zest that you've got over there, girl. Yeah, you know, I'm zesty. <laughs> uh, I love it. And it's filled okay. with vitamins. Vitamin C, so I'm happy to be on zesting duties. Especially in the season, Nepal. I'm telling you, girl. Now, when it comes to um, you, Leila, I want to find out just a little bit about yourself, you and cooking. Um, do you have any specific passions in the kitchen? I do. I really do like creating new things in the kitchen. Anything healthy, anything nutritious, such as the lemon being full of vitamin C. I really love inventing new nutritious meals to eat every day and being easy as well. Super simple. I mean, someone like you who is, I'm sure you're on every soccer club, <laughs> hockey, netball, mm -hmm. someone very busy like you. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself packing something like this in your lunchbox? Yes, every on? day. And pre preparing it the night before. Just having it in the fridge, putting it out there that you can just grab it when you're on the go. Okay, I love that. Uh, do me on your side, how's it going? It's going quite cool. I'm just waiting for Angelique to uh, pass me the onions over there. And I see Layla's going in with her pasta that's going into the water. And as you can see, the water's definitely boiling. I give Layla a thumbs up as well, because it means this girl can definitely throw it down in the kitchen. <laughs> and Angelique, on your side, what, they, what do you love about being in the kitchen? Are you in the kitchen often at home? I am, actually. Um, I think what I love about it most is you're creating something that is authentically you and you're sharing it with the people that you love. And I think that is what food is. It's love, and I quite enjoy that. Ah. Beautifully put. Mm -hmm. If you are Leila and Angelique's parents, or of course Eloise or Carlos's parents, I'm sure your heart right now is just beating <laughs> with joy and with just so much pride. Can you believe that you made these geniuses? I mean, I, I, I feel almost blessed to be next to you right now. How important is school though to you? Are you are you one of those people? I saw you had a bit of a Christmas tree on your blazer. <laughs> I do love going to school every day, just being there, enjoying it with my friends, doing sport after school. It's really one of the best phases I feel in your lifetime that you shouldn't wish to be over mm. and grow up too fast. A lot of people do wish away their youth, Dumi, don't you find? A lot of people do say, oh, I can't wait to be independent. I can't wait to be grown. And I'm just like, trust me, you do not want these responsibilities. So because we are officially Angelique in Youth Month, I asked Carlos this question at the top of the show and I want to ask you, what does Youth Month mean to you? I think, honestly, um, it is something that is so important to us youth because it's empowering and it represents a unity. Yeah. And I think that is what is important because it shows that we as youth, if we put our minds to it, we can do anything. Well, talk about doing anything. We took on a TikTok challenge at the top of the segment. Well, we are making a feta bake with um, some cherry tomatoes. How's it going for me? I mean, we did see the TikTok at the top, but now we're actually putting money where our mouth is and making it. Yes, Palissa, and the flavors are coming along well. I don't know if you can smell the onion from your end over there. Yeah. I've just added the garlic into this as well. We've got some chili flakes that have gone in. I added a bit of salt because you obviously need that salty flavor. And then to... I'm not going to say finish it off, but the next step is I'm going to add some feta in today because the feta basically works as the binding agent because most people don't know that as the feta cooks down, it actually becomes somewhat of a sauce. It so becomes thick and gooey. Correct. So that's going to bind all of this together in this dish of ours. And then I'm just going to add the pasta at the end because we just basically want the pasta to be surrounded and engulfed in this beautiful sauce that we're making over here. Super simple, super easy. I can see why uh, Balbo High School decided to try this uh, in class. <laughs> Because, I mean, who wouldn't want to make a delicious feta bake at school to enjoy, whether it's lunchtime or whether it's just snacking in between class? So, Dumi, here is the lemon zest that I have also whipped up. What is that that you also just added? All right, so what you normally do is, if at all you're struggling to thicken up your pasta dish, don't ever get rid of that pasta water. So I've just added some of that pasta water into our sauce here because what that happens is the, so the thickness from the sauce and the cheese that we've just added, mm -hmm. as you can see, it's all getting bound nicely together in here. So you don't have to worry about your sauce being too runny. So this Beautiful. is perfect. All I'm going to do is just give it a bit of time to cook down and then we're going to dish this baby up and eat. I love that. Leila, you were in charge of the pasta as well. Yes. What is your favorite way of preparing pasta? Do you have, do you time it? Do you taste it? I honestly taste it till it's al dente. Just a little bit soft, silver tree. Yes. Also add a bit of salt for flavor. 
and then the oil just so it doesn't stick to each other. Okay. So I think that's the golden rules when cooking pasta. Girl, I mean, I feel like not only do we have geniuses, Einsteins in the kitchen, but we also have some gourmet chefs in the making. Now, take Talk, yep, it's time to, we've almost run out um, together, creating these beautiful masterpieces. But in case you want to get any of the ingredients or recipes for our delicious cook-along, just head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. Dish that up, do me. I'm dishing it up. And as you are dishing that up, I think it's time for our very next TikTok challenge. What do you ladies think? Yes, yes. drop forward. <laughs> okay, now a new dance challenge has taken over social media and it's all thanks to one of my favorite DJs Udurban Goko with over 2.8 million views. We're definitely loving how this new TikTok has taken over the song Dag Iwe and brought us the hashtag Dag Iwe challenge. Now all it is is you and your crew are bobbing your heads whilst moving in a wave motion side to side. But you have to do it with attitude. Let's have a look. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Well, I think we're ready. We are in action. Our Belleville High School students are on deck. Can we please cue the music in three, two, one. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, one, two, let's go. Devin, go, go. What a way, what chance. Superstars in the love, but we have got so much more fun, laughter, and recipes coming up. I'm a... <laughs>
welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now we're back on the road with the Olive Pride Chef Tour and this week, critically acclaimed master chef Ruben Riffle turns his mom's nostalgic fish curry recipe into a five-star dish that will have you begging on his door, asking for some more. A seat at the table. Cook along with us on the Clover Olive Pride Chef's Tour, a proudly South African cooking journey through the towns and dishes that made foodie heroes, such as the champion of traditional African cuisine, Luyanda Mafanya, master of fine dining, Chef Ruben Riffle, and proud flag bearer of National Bride Day, Jan Bry. Made with Olive Pride, prepare to be proud. This week on the Olive Pride Chef's Tour, we visit the town many call our food and wine capital. We're cooking with a man who helped shape this culinary hotspot, Franchuk born and bred Chef Ruben Riffle. I recently got the opportunity to revisit my childhood home, which is just around the corner. And I got reminded of one of my mom's favorite dishes. She used to love seafood curries. I decided to make something similar, but with a little bit more of a modern twist. So I'm making a roasted hake in calamari with arissa, honey and lemon cream, couscous, baby marrow and sweet corn. And then we're finishing it off with a tomato and mint salsa. First step is to make the arissa honey cream. Arissa is a North African spice paste and the ingredients in there is peppers, uh, chili, uh, cumin, onion and garlic and it's just blended together by the use of olive oil. To that I'm going to add the cream and the honey. So the honey I add for a tiny bit of sweetness but I don't want the sauce to be too sweet. Now just let that cook down till it gets a nice thick sauce consistency and then towards the end I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon juice just to brighten it up. So I add it towards the end just to give that nice fresh flavor and what lemon juice does, it brings out all those beautiful flavors and what we're trying to create is a bit of a sweet and sour as well. Okay, now that's ready, I'm gonna put it to one side and we're gonna start on the couscous. I love using couscous really because it's so easy and quick to make. I love the flavor of it and it's a great vehicle to carry different types of flavors as well. You can use stock. In this case, I want a cleaner flavor, so I'm just using water. Okay, I like to add olive oil to my couscous because I think it really just um, even brings out that flavor of the couscous well. It's two natural products, so it really works well together. And then just salt and pepper. And then the last step, I'm just gonna cover it. So the steam will cook the couscous nice and gently and then later on we'll just use a fork to fluff it nicely. Okay, while that steams, I'll quickly toast the coconut. So I'm dry roasting it or toasting it in a dry pan basically. It just allows that natural oil to come out of this desiccated coconut and gives it that nice kind of toasty flavor that will work really well in our couscous. Love the smell of toasted coconut. Right, now I'm gonna add the coconut and the cinnamon to my couscous. So that goes straight in there. The nuttiness of the coconut and the earthiness of the cinnamon is gonna pair so nicely with that harissa cream. Then just fluff it all together with a fork. It's as simple as that. So for myself, I'm using rosa tomatoes, jalapeno chili, garlic, coriander, and fresh mint from my garden. This tomato and mint salsa is a great way of bringing freshness to this dish, and it's very simple to make. Simply chop up all these ingredients, add them all together, add a bit of olive oil and salt, as easy as that. I love the smell of mint, and the, the nice thing, it's so easy to grow it in your own garden. And mint, obviously, you can use in so many different dishes as well. 
So I'm removing the seeds out of this jalapeno because I don't want it to be too hot. But when I grew up, my mom just left it in there. I think we got used to that spiciness. I like to get the garlic as fine as possible because the last thing you want in a salsa is to bite into a big piece of garlic. And then finish it off with olive pride, extra virgin olive oil. I love this olive oil because it's got really nice buttery and nutty notes and also the texture is quite smooth. The other great thing is that it's high in antioxidants, so quite healthy as well. And just a little bit of lemon juice to finish it off. And now for the gyro. I'm using hike and calamari, and I'm frying it in the olive pride blend. And I'm using this oil because it's quite versatile and the great thing about it is that it retains that beautiful olive oil flavor even at a high cooking point. So it's great for frying and baking. So growing up, we actually ate quite a lot of seafood, but when it came to fish, it was mostly snook. I'm using hake though, because it's quite easy to fill it. It's less bony, I've got kids. Uh, and they really prefer hike. And at the end, just quickly flash fry this calamari. is looking awesome. I think it's time for us to put all of this together. Time for a quick taste. Mm. Beautiful. the plate with a little bit of extra mint and I'm serving the couscous and the salsa on the side. So there we have it, inspired by my childhood. This is roasted hake, calamari, harissa, honey cream with a little bit of lemon, some sweet corn and baby marrow and on the side we have a mint and tomato salsa and couscous flavored with coconut and cinnamon. I hope you enjoy making this at home with olive pride prepare to be proud. Join us again next week as we go west with Jan Bry, discovering Saldana's treasured Atlantic mussels and fresh line fish. Cook along with Jan as the Olive Pride Chef's Tour continues to thrill our taste buds and inspire new dishes. Now it's another week and another opportunity to make some winners. And this week, our lucky winner is none other than Kile Bukhile Khokhome. Congratulations, girl. You've won yourself a gas Weber braai, and I know everyone will be lining up at your house too, waiting for a weekend braai invitation. Now, don't forget, you too can stand a chance to win a weekly Weber braai and be entered into the grand prize draw to win a kitchen makeover worth 150,000 Rand. For details on how to enter, you can buy Olive Pride in store and follow those instructions in the free recipe book. Good luck! Join Olive Pride Chef's Tour and travel the country as we cook along with Luyanda Mafanya, Ruben Riffel and Young Bride every Tuesday on Afternoon Express. Win one of ten cooking appliances weekly or a grand prize of a kitchen makeover worth 150,000 Rand. To enter, buy any Olive Pride pack and dial star 120 star 2462 star with your unique code to enter. Prepare to be proud. 
Now, today's show has been all about celebrating young foodies and all their amazing talents. And since they've shared their recipes with us, we've decided to show them one of our absolute favorites with a little bit of a surprise as well. Now, welcome back, Leila. I'm so glad to have you. Are you ready for dessert? Yes, always. But before we also we have to leave space for dessert, though. <laughs> this is my girl. This is my girl. What I love about you is that you're confident, you're outspoken, and you're a girl who knows what she wants. Now, when it comes to finding out who your favorite foodie or chef is, who's that person? It's Herman Lensing, and I do like his way of cooking because it's always something new, something our grandparents made, and he uses these ingredients to make something new and definitely more delicious, I feel. So it's something I have as cookbooks. I'm really inspired by his way of cooking. I also think that's so special. You know, a lot of people want that kind of mentor in the kitchen, someone that Umama can be proud of, that someone that you look up to. Now, if you were to say one thing to Herman, Herman uh, if he could watch from wherever he is, what would that be? What kind of shout out would you give him? If you could give it to him there. I would say, well done on everything you're doing and honoring your mother and your grandmother through your cooking. It's honestly so inspiring. Oh, and on that note, <laughs> we have got a <laughs> <laughs> that is so mooi. My English is by my English are very limited. I will, I will speak this fluent English like the Afrikaans people do. Bye, mooi woorde. Thank you, my Engel. Thank you. I mean, when you hear someone like uh, Leila just speaking about you in such a beautiful way, how does that make you feel? And don't worry, you can speak Afrikaans. <laughs> no, it makes me so proud. You know, um, we all are only the result of the people that that you surround yourself with. You know, and it's like. I work because I want to inspire people, because I was at a young age inspired to cook and to om die taal van kost te praat, you know, and that is amazing to hear that people, that I can, can inspire people. I mean, that's why we're we here, to make other people's life better and make them smile. So, thank you, my Engel. And how are you feeling right now? Overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, dumbstruck, to say the least. But it's amazing, it's amazing. Oh, it was wow. like more than right to live. Oh, I agree, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the tears welling up in Layla's eyes. I am truly moved. This is how we're gonna kick off our youth month and we're gonna keep it going throughout. So Dumi, it's time for that sweet ending. Yes, darling, we are getting it nice and sweet here at the end. And to start it off, I've already started cutting up some croissants. Yes, whenever you're making bread pudding, most people will stick to normal white bread, uh, but I think let's just zhuzh it up a little bit. You know, this is what you're about. This is what Leila said. Yeah. You like to add your bit of flavor to I mean, stuff. And we all croissants laying around in the house anyway. You know, yeah. so why not? <laughs> why don't we make pudding with it? Exactly. So I'm chopping or cutting up some croissants over here. And Balissa, right next to you, you've got a whole array of breads that you could use as well. We've mm. got more spolaki. We've got brioche bread. We've even got pot broti, which I feel like you could also use, right? Yeah, like imagine mm. making a big pot brot bread and butter pudding. You Ooh. cut off the top and you bring this bread. Oh, it's going to your command. Delicious. <laughs> We, well, already Leila and I are like, okay, give us, give us more. Give, <laughs> us, give us, give us more. I'm already starting with the egg mixture because yes. we know a bread pudding is not a bread pudding without the uh, eggs. Hey. Correct. Mm -hmm. Of course. All right, and into that, uh, we've also got some of the ing some ingredients that Herman's going to be using here. You've got yes. some milk, cream, sugar, and some vanilla essence, and that e those eggs go into that mixture. Leila, being this, the guest here because we have <laughs> youth, she's going to put the finishing touches to yes. everything with some icing sugar and some raspberries and a bit of custard. I mean, this is the magic to life. I mean, cream and milk, if it's about, where's the butter? The oh, butter, yeah, it's right butter. I mean, life is perfect, <laughs> what more do you need? It's so interesting that you did mention where is the butter, because our key word today, uh, every time we spoke about you coming in, we were said, it's our surprise butter. <laughs> we went with that surprise butter, because we are making mm. a raspberry bread and butter pudding. Now, the eggs have been whisked up. Do you mind passing that to Chef? Thank you so much. And speaking of you being a chef, I mean, we are in Youth Month. You got your start with food at a very young age yourself. I mean, at the age of 22, we saw you as the f a food editor for a very popular magazine. Can you just tell us about your journey whilst you're cooking? Whilst I'm cooking? <laughs> I'm a man, we can't do it at the same time. No, you know, I was very fortunate enough. I grew up in a typical Afrikaans home where, where food was the center of everything we did, you know, and um, I always knew that food was the one thing. I always said to my friends and my family, I want to do something where I can make an impact in people's lives every day, and never knowing that I'm going to end up in a place where I did. Mm -hmm. So from a young age, and, um, I wanted to be a chef, I studied to be a chef, and then ended up working for Sari magazine, 
I mean, Shaw from the Dogs, the editor, I still think that the alien was inside her body. <laughs> I still don't know why she employed me. But yeah, it was amazing. And I mean, that was that moment of truth. You know, there's always that one moment of truth that, that changed your life. And if I didn't say yes to that application, or didn't click on that link or apply it, you know, I wouldn't have, my whole life wouldn't have changed. And since that day, I mean, things have just changed for me. I've got the opportunity to cook with people right across the world, you know, inspire them with food. And I think um, there's that one moment a day we all have to sit around the table and look each other in the eye, you know, and enjoy food. Mm -hmm. And if I am able to inspire people to cook sim simple stuff, good food doesn't mean that you have to have a whole pantry of, of ingredients. It's everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. It's about that, in, like, what, what, what your bedoeling is, you know, yeah. what you want to put on the table. And how it makes you feel. And exactly. I believe that food is a labor of love. We always say it in our Afternoon Express cook-alongs and master classes. And that's what we're displaying now. I know you are definitely feeling the love. So if I were to turn that question around on you, it is Youth Month. What does Youth Month mean to you? I think Youth Month is, is such a prominent part in our youth lives and I think most of the youth actually don't know what Youth Month actually means and what happened in the history and I think it's important to remember our worth in the society and that we can make a difference even though we are still young and that we should start young and then it will build up when we're much older we will look back and be really thankful for what we did at a young age. It's so true and I'm so glad that you've said that. You know, someone asked me recently from a magazine, what generation would you want to be born into? What era? What time? And I said, none other than the current because I believe that our generation have something special to give and uh, we're kind of in the middle of the old school and the new school coming together in a beautiful way and it takes such young, brave youths like yourself who can celebrate those youths in 1976 and say, you know, bravo to you. But we're going to keep that torch going. Speaking about keeping torches going, how's it going on your side, Helen? No, it's going internationally, yeah. <laughs> really, like, this is a bread and butter putting it go on the pages of Vogue. I mean, yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. And, Balisa, we've just added our croissant, which is in itself very nice and buttery. And then into there, do not be shocked, it's going to melt nicely into this dish. We're adding some butter. Okay. And then we're going to let this cook down, but we're going to add our beautiful sauce that Chef made for yes. us into there, because bread and butter pudding is all about that mixture as well. So all yes. of this goes together into our oven to bake nicely and the other thing is don't worry about the sweetness because we only put the sugar in here but croissants have a touch of sweetness as Thank well you. so you don't need too much sugar in this recipe well, not in my kitchen. I like to add sugar to everything. <laughs> Excuse me. It's so that's going to go into the oven to bake nicely. Uh, what temperature would you say, say, Chef? I think like 180 degrees. The magic to a bread and butter pudding is that you must never over bake it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the eggs, um, oh, it's a big word for me, they coagulate it at, <laughs> at 60 degrees Celsius, I think. So yeah. it's like you must bake it like it's almost like a bit of jelly. So when you take it out, it will cool down and set nicely and you get that mouth in the mouth texture. Wow. There's nothing worse than a piece of biscuit on your plate. You want to have something that melts in your mouth. True. Absolutely, and I think that that is what the key is to this pudding. A lot of people might overcook their bread pudding, making it hard, making that crust that little bit more painful. So I love the fact, Chad, that you've spoken about the consistency. It has to be almost jelly-like. Mm, yeah. Okay, it's got to move. It's got to move. Probably a bit. And then speaking about... A bit nervous. A little nervous. Speaking about moving, um, you are putting the finishing touches, Leila, on this. Mm -hmm. So what do you have in front of you? I have some icing sugar it's for the little dust effect. And then we're going to put on a bit of custard just because it's not as sweet. Yeah. I'm not a sweet tooth myself, though, but I do like a bit of custard you just did to say even that, out the balance. Yeah, you do say that you do love a, a good... Uh, Bitter, sweet kind yeah, of mixture. It's a combination of everything, and I think that's important to have balance and not just too sweet. Oh, that's my opinion. <laughs> it seems as if we've got someone here who's all about balance, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's outdoors, or in their own menu, in their own kitchen. The things that they put in their body, how important is nutrients, especially in these young ones? Yeah, I mean, what you put in your body is a direct, you know, in, like outcome of what you become, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Source local ingredients, always try to make things from as natural as possible. I mean, that's the secret. Beautiful. And limit a bit of sugar. Just a little bit. A little bit. Just not too much. <laughs> well, as you guys are going back and forth about all things sugar, we can never get enough of a deliciously made bread and butter pudding. And we know that you can hurry over to afternoonexpress.co.za to get your hands on this recipe and just so much more. Pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. This is Pharmacy of the Week.
Well, serving this community as a pharmacist is really rewarding for me. It gives me the opportunity to build our new relationships with patients and also to serve the community with medical advice and clinic services. COVID-19 had a big impact on the pharmacy and the community. We had a lot more sick patients coming into the pharmacy for medical advice. So during this pandemic, my team and I were here every day. We were serving the community and offering our services. Bravery to me means getting up in the morning and coming to work uh, even through the pandemic. The customers we serve here are more than just customers, they are part of the Redham family. Pharmacy of the Week, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave. Welcome back as you are about to be invited to a seat at this table. We're still being joined by the Belleville High students. Now we've got one in our table and we've got the others joining us. You know, raping behind me, can I get a whoop whoop? <laughs> Love it for us. Now we've reached my favorite part of the show where we get to indulge in all the delicious food that we've made. As I've already said, not only are we being joined by the inspiring talents that are the Belleville High School students, but also sharing in the aspiration, dreams, love is none other than Chef Herman. Now, uh, Chef, I know you haven't been here from the top of the show, so I'm gonna have to ask Dumi, can you run us through what we made? Most definitely, Bale. So we've got some delicious treats over here. We've got a creamy mushroom soup mm -hmm. that has an addition of those croutons that we baked mm -hmm. and just a bit of 
parsley at the top and some par parmesan. And then we've got that trend as well, another trend, which is that <laughs> <laughs> baked feta uh, pasta dish that is absolutely amazing with the tomato flavors in there. We've got some parsley and lemon zest in there. And then we've got the bread and butter pudding to finish it all off. And instead of bread, we've used our croissants mm. that just take very it all to fancy. very fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Elevating it all. Okay, Herman, please may you dish up for me. I want some pasta okay. um, and I want a little bit of bread pudding on the side. But whilst you do all of that, Angelique, I have to find out from you. They yes. do say the youth is the future, so no pressure. <laughs> but <laughs> None at all. But if you were to just kind of forecast, push forward another 15, 10 to 15 years, where do you see yourself growing and becoming? Already your blazer is decked <laughs> out with all the badges and all the colours. So, girl, where are you going to take this power? Honestly, at the beginning of the year, I was a little two-sided of what I wanted to do with my future, but I decided on psychology. Oh, wow. It's quite interesting to me, and I, I'm, a very, I'm a people person, and I, I, like, I like to help people, and I think that is where my passion lies. So that is what I see for my future. That's so, so interesting. That's, that is absolutely amazing because talking about psychology, there's like youth mental health is so important and so, so great that you're going in that direction. And as much as we are celebrating Youth Month, I think it is only important that we highlight young people that are doing great things. I mean, we've got children, uh, students here that are achieving in so many different mm. departments and that's just something okay. beautiful to see. And on that note, I have to just turn the attention then to you, Chef. When it comes to imagining the youth of today, what do you think is just so special about them, especially this generation? You know, I have a lot of admiration for, for their can-do-anything attitude. Mm -hmm. I find it, in my generation, we were very sort of weary of just doing things. You know, you always had to have that sort of, someone did that so I can also achieve that mm -hmm. attitude. That's so true. nowadays, I, sound, I find myself surrounded by young people who go, I can actually be anything. The world is borderless. I'm a global citizen. I can yeah. be anything I want to be. And I think if you have that mindset, I mean, yeah. if we want to be anything we want to be, we can be the ones who change the world. Sure. You know, there's no limitations. I love mm. it. Always, I always think that the, the people, the younger generation, the younger people I meet now, is like the, the dreamers we were as kids. Oh. There's nothing that keeps them back. And I think that's important never to lose that. You know? Because that's what they say to me. They say that at the end of the day, the job that you're going to have in the future probably doesn't exist yet. I know. So it forces you to be innovative and think out the box. So all the best to all of the youths out there and happy Youth Month. Happy Youth Month to everyone, Vanessa. And it is not just one celebration this month. We are celebrating uh, Pride Month. So in a lot to all our LGBTQI uh, compatriots over out, out there. We are saying we celebrate you, we mm. love you, and we are celebrating all the youth. It is just a month of celebration. But I love that. Not only are we saying Amanda, but I want to see those rainbow flags mm. flying mm. high. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Herman, for the amazing surprise. I can tell uh, Leila is still <laughs> calming down from that shot. And thank you so much, um, Angelique. Not only coming through so eloquently, but showing that you can be an do anything you want to be. And to you guys, more power to you guys. <laughs> and peace. Now, we will be continuing our appreciation of the culinary trends on TikTok with kids from Silwood School of Cooking. I'm looking forward to that on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. right here on S3. But until then, Mzansi City, good night, stay safe, and happy eating. Goodbye. Bye. Cheers to family favorites and recipes passed from mothers to daughters. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.